I had to cover this news item because I believe this is going to have far reaching impacts for AI globally. Today I am going to talk about something that happened just yesterday that I think deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. Chinese AI company Jaifu AI released a model for image generation just yesterday GLM image which we covered thoroughly on the channel. The model is quite good. But the news here is that this GLM image was entirely trained on Huawei's domestic chip stack. That's correct. You have heard it right. No Nvidia, no CUDA, no any western semiconductor whatsoever. And the model itself isn't going to blow anyone away in terms of raw capability. I have to be honest. But what it represents is actually pretty significant for the future of AI development globally. And that is not a small thing. So let's start with what actually happened. Jaifu AI, which is a Beijing based company that just had an IPO in Hong Kong released GLM image. And that IPO is a big, big deal, not only for Jaifu, but also for Minimax. This GLM image is a 9 billion parameter image generation model. The entire training pipeline from data preparation to the final training run was conducted on Huawei's Ascent chip, which is Atlas 800T A2. And all those servers using Huawei's own Ascend AI processors and their Mind Spore machine learning framework. By the way, we have covered each of these components in detail on the channel. And this is notable because it's essentially the first time a reasonably capable open source model has been developed solely on a completely domestic Chinese technology stack. Now let's be honest about what GLM image actually is because that's very important. It's not a frontier model and we saw it in this video when we installed it. It is quite good, but still the company's own benchmarks show it still lags behind such as ByteDance proprietary Seadream 4.5 model and OpenAI's model and various other models. People who have tested it online, including me, have reported that many of the outputs are really, really good, but some of them are not impressive compared to what we have seen from models like Flux or even older stable diffusion variants. The architecture is interesting though. It uses a hybrid approach combining autoregressive and diffusion elements, which allows it to handle both image and text generation. But I'm not going to go into the detail. I want to focus on this news item and I will drop the link to this article in video's description. And by the way, this particular news outlet, as far as I know, is owned by Alibaba. If someone thinks that this is not correct, please correct me in the comments, but that is what I think. Anyway, so. Let me give you now some context on why this matters. The US has been progressively tightening export controls on advanced semiconductors going to China. Nvidia's job, top chips have been restricted for years now, and even their less powerful chips designed specifically for the Chinese market have faced various hurdles. Just this week, there was news that while the US gave approval for Nvidia to sell H200 chips to China, Beijing itself has apparently told customs agents to block imports and is now only approving orders in exceptional circumstances. So even China is not accepting even when US is willing to give them the chips. So we have this interesting situation where both sides are now flexing the muscles, effectively blocking chip transfer, though for very different reasons, as we can all tell. Well, the conventional reason, I would say, uh, maybe, um, is different that and it has been that these export controls would significantly slow down Chinese AI development because Nvidia uh, and its chips and CUDA software ecosystem are so so dominant in machine learning and that's been largely true. Most of the major Chinese AI models that we know about including those from companies like DeepSeek and Alibaba have been trained on Nvidia hardware. The few models publicly known to be trained on domestic chips have come from second tier players. Jaifu itself was added to the US export control list in January last year. So they have extra incentive to figure out alternatives like other Chinese players. Well, but what GLM image shows is that the domestic alternative path is at least feasible for these Chinese 
companies. Is it optimal? Clearly not. The model is smaller and less capable than what could likely be achieved on equivalent NVIDIA hardware. The MindSpore framework has much lower adoption than PyTorch or TensorFlow, but viable is meaningful here, very meaningful. It means that Chinese AI development can continue even under a complete chip embargo, just at a slower pace, but still will go on. So, I mean, you could draw a pretty dramatic conclusion from this, like, you know, you can say that, you know, these restrictions have backfired by accelerating Chinese domestic chip development, or you could say that this is basically irrelevant because training a 9 billion parameter image model is vastly different from training a frontier large language model with hundreds of billions of parameter. So I think both of these uh, angles have some truth to it, but I think that they are both somewhat oversimplified. In my humble opinion, the reality is that we don't know yet whether Huawei's Ascent chips can effectively train the largest and most capable model. Jaifu's flagship GLM 7 or 4.7 or even 5 series of models still need to be proven on domestic hardware. There's a big gap between training a 9 billion parameter image model and training something like, uh, um, you know, Cloud Opus 4.5. The software ecosystem matters enormously too. CUDA isn't just about hardware, it's decades of optimized libraries, debugging tools, and accumulated knowledge that makes development faster and way, way more efficient. Now, from a pure technology perspective, it's also interesting to see different hardware and software approaches being explored. Uh, I think competitions tend to drive innovation and having alternatives to the dominant NVIDIA ecosystem could potentially lead to useful developments even if those alternatives are not quite as performant in the short term. So where does this leaves us, the mere models? Look, we are not taking sides, but GLM image itself is not a breakthrough model. We acknowledge that. It's a research project, an experimental architecture, a proof of concept, but with a very decent quality. And it's a proof of concept that demonstrates something that matters strategically. Chinese AI development is not going to stop because of chip restriction. It may slow down, it, it has, it may take different paths, but it's going to continue. So whether you view that as a good thing or a bad thing, maybe just maybe probably depend on your broader views about technology competition and geopolitics but either way it's a reality we are heading toward and i think it's important to understand these developments clearly rather than either overhyping them or dismissing them entirely so that's it for today again please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member please also follow me on x if you're looking for ai updates without any hype and towards the end Please let me know what do you think in the comments about this article and I will drop the link to it in video's description. Spe especially in your opinion, are export controls on AI chips fundamentally effective or they are just delaying the inevitable? Very keen to know that. Thank you for all the support.